In this video, we define principal rays for the concave lens. The convex lens and concave lens have different principal rays, so we need to define a new set of principal rays for convex, excuse me, for concave lenses. We'll also introduce two equations, a thin lens equation that allows us to locate where the image forms, and a magnification equation that allows us to, to, to determine or calculate how high the image, excuse me, how large the image will be. For concave lens, we have three principal rays, just like before, but the rules for how to draw them are almost the opposite of what they were for a convex lens. So principal ray number one comes in parallel to the optical axis, and when it hits the center of our lens, it bends upward, and the amount it bends upward is such that if we trace that backwards, the backwards traced path intersects with the focal point. Principal ray number two in blue is exactly the same as it was for the convex lens. It is simply a ray that passes through the center of our lens and does not bend at all. That is again an approximation, but one that works well as long as our lens is not too thick. The third principal ray travels towards the focal point on the far side of our lens, meaning if I were to continue this line, continue this light ray along a straight line, it would intersect with this focal point. However, when this ray reaches the center of our lens, it bends enough that it comes out parallel to the optical axis. Our three principal rays are diverging in this case, which of course means we need to trace those rays backwards. That's what we do here. And the three rays intersect at the location of our virtual image. So we draw three principal rays leaving the tip of our object. Those three rays, when traced backwards, intersect at the tip of our image. In this case, I've drawn the object sitting on the optical axis, the way it is drawn in lots of textbooks. If the object is on the optical axis, then all three of these principal rays are exactly the same thing. And so the base of our image also lies on the optical axis if the base of our object is on the optical axis. If instead I had drawn the object up here off of the optical axis, then we would draw all three principal rays from the base of our object and we would find that we can trace them back to find the base of our image, similar to what we did for the convex lens. So those are the three principal rays for a concave lens. Uh, you do need to memorize these. You do need to know that they are different from the principal rays for a convex lens. Next thing to introduce is the thin lens equation, which relates the object distance, image distance, and focal length. Uh, notice these are all, there are no absolute values in this equation. Uh, if the image distance is negative, which it sometimes is, then this is a negative number. If the focal length is negative, which it sometimes is, then this is a negative number. Uh, for a convex lens, focal length will be greater than zero. For a concave lens, focal length will be less than zero. That is just something you need to memorize. When focal length is positive, convex lens. When focal length is negative, concave lens. For the image distance, a positive image distance means that the image forms on the real side of the lens. A negative image distance means that the image forms on the virtual side of the lens. Uh, for object distance, object distance is always positive, so there's nothing to worry about there. Our other equation is the magnification equation, and it is defined as the negative image distance. This will sometimes come out to be negative times negative the negative image distance divided by the object distance, and that is equal to the height of the image divided by the height of the object. From this definition, a positive magnification means that the image is upright, that uh, if it's an arrow, it points the same direction as the object points. If the magnification comes out to be negative, it means that the image is inverted, that it points the opposite direction as the object points. If the absolute value of magnification is larger than one, it means the image is larger than the object. 
This table summarizes uh, positive and negative conventions that we use in our class. So for each of our quantities, this column lists when that quantity has a positive value versus when that quantity has a negative value. Uh, I would recommend just pausing the video and taking a moment to write notes on this. You will need to memorize this table. So let's go back to our first ray diagram for a convex lens and just see an example of how these two equations work. So looking at our thin lens equation, our object distance, which is always positive, is 6, counting from the center of our lens, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Our image distance, we are going to try to calculate. And our focal length, it's positive because this is a convex lens, and it has a value of 1, 2, 3, 4. So we plug in those numbers into our thin lens equation. We calculate an image distance of 12, comparing that to our diagram, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Our calculation matches our diagram, and the image distance is positive, meaning that our image is over here on the real side of our lens. Turning to the magnification equation, negative image distance, negative of positive 12. Uh, I guess I added centimeters. I pretended we're in centimeter units uh, for this slide divided by our object distance of positive 6 gives us a magnification of negative 2. Negative means our image is inverted. That matches our diagram. And 2 means our image should be twice the size of our object. Our object has a height of 1, 2, 3, 4. Our image has a height of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. In any diagram, the ray diagram and the calculations from these equations should match. On an exam, you can expect that I would ask you to solve a problem both ways to show that you get consistent answers, whether you do it with a diagram or with equations and calculations.